Swampert, Fighting Typing. Its text entries describe its physical strength that is capable of moving boulders that weigh a ton, to swim as fast as a jet ski, and using it to swing its rock hard and thick arms when fighting. And this statement is even echoed in its anime dex entries. And even if you don't think Rayo Swampert can pull it off, its mega evolution form can most certainly, with it gaining tremendous muscular power all over its body, especially in its arms, which was showcased in the Pokemon Adventures manga. And according to the anime special, it states specifically that it inflates its muscles by absorbing air to increase its punching power. In fact, this great physical strength is even reflected in its stats with Mega Swampert only emphasizing this even further. Add on to that, it does learn a decent amount of fighting terms already, including superpower among others. Beautifly, Dark Typing While evidence for this typing is lacking and admittedly stretching, I say this solely based on its dex entries describing it as having an aggressive, savage, and even greedy nature by chasing away Combi and keeping all the nectar for itself, which may be reflected in the ability to learn the dark type move Thief, as well as, quote, stabbing and jabbing the prey with its long, narrow mouth to drain their body fluids, which gives credence to its behavior possibly being inspired from a mosquito or the vampire moth. And even in its Japanese and Chinese name etymology, they reference its aggressive nature by containing the word hunt in agehanto. Dustox, Flying Typing This one, much like Venomoth and Bijou, has various obvious reasons for why it should be part flying type. Now, not only is it based around moths and butterflies, specifically the Japanese Lunar Moth, Moon Moth, and Silk Moth, all of which are shown by its Pokemon category, its French and Chinese name etymology containing the word butterfly, and its Japanese and Chinese names containing the word moth, its official design clearly has wings, which its in-game anime and even adventures manga Pokedex entries states that it is capable of using them to fly that ties into it using them to scatter dust and toxic powder. Not to mention the anime itself, which has clearly shown it numerous times flying in the air. Remember Jesse's dust ox? It also learns Gust, a flying type move upon evolving among other flying type moves, and its in-game sprites, both 2D and 3D, clearly shows it using them to fly in the air. Need I say more? Masquerain, water typing. While its dex entries do propose this idea that it seemingly hides from the rain as its wings are very water absorbent and thus wouldn't allow it to fly, it nevertheless is depicted in the games and anime as inhabiting water, or at least nearby one, such as Route 229 via surfing, surfing in the meadow section of Johto's Safari Zone, Route 3 via surfing, Molly Garden, and if we count side series games, there's Lake Everspring Valley and Serenity River, among others. It also remains in the Water 1 air group like Surskid, which contains Pokemon capable of living both on land or in aquatic locations, like the ones I mentioned earlier as well as retaining its origins of Water Striders, which is presumably indicated by its Japanese name etymology along with Surskits. It maintains its ability to learn a fair amount of water type moves such, such as Soak and Bubble Beam, and its name etymology in practically all available languages contains the word Rain in them, so I'd say it's arguable. The Breloom Line, Poison Typing According to the Pokedex and anime dex entries, the hardened shells on Breloom's tail are in fact poisonous spores that it uses to immobilize their opponent, and it mentions Shroomish releasing toxic powder if it senses danger, which was shown in the anime and the animated spin-off series Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Plus, what seems to be a characteristic of Poison-type Pokemon is that they appear to inhabit dirty or polluted environments, such as the Great Marsh and the Wasteland section of Johto's Safari Zone, and even consume wasteful and or polluted substances, such as rotten leaves and decomposing plants and trees. Both have Poison Heal as one of their abilities, and both are based on poisonous mushrooms as indicated by their Pokemon category, with Shroomus likely being inspired on Puffball Fungi, which are poisonous at the young premature stage, and with Breloom likely taking inspiration from Agaric Mushrooms, which are indeed poisonous. This as a result may explain why they can learn a few poison type moves like Poison Powder, including being one of the few non-poison type Pokemon that can learn the move Toxic. The Probopass line, Electric Typing. It is one of the few non-steel type Pokemon to have the Magnet Pro ability that is mostly given to steel and electric type Pokemon, and ironically, its German name etymology contains the word Magnet to describe it, and in the 7th generation, it could notably be found with the Magnet item that is mainly associated with boosting electric type moves. This also connects to how both are based on compasses as indicated by their Pokemon category and English and Korean name etymology that use iron fillings to point towards a magnetic field. This could point to the fact that Nosepass can notably be found in electrical caves such as Chargestone Cave and Mount Coronet, 
and how nose paths uses magnetism from areas with a special magnetic field to evolve into propopaths. And most notably, it is directly stated numerous times both in their dex entries that their body can emit a strong magnetism or magnetic force from all over their bodies, which is also how Propopass is able to control its three mini noses and iron sand mustache, all of which is coincidentally supported by the anime and with their dex entries. Both Pokemon can also learn a lot of Electrotype moves already, particularly with Magnetic Flux and Spark, both being Electrotype moves that is mostly given to Electrotype Pokemon. And to put the icing on the cake, starting in Legends Arceus, it can evolve by using a Thunderstone, a stone that is beloved by and used to evolve, well, Electrotype Pokemon. Marwal, Dark Typing. For starters, it is categorized as the Deceiver Pokemon, with its Japanese and Korean name etymology containing the word cheat, which its dex entries could reference its nature for being a cunning, terrifying, and dangerous Pokemon to come across, especially for Mega Marwal having an extremely violent disposition and its two jaws constantly thrashing about violently as a result of Mega Evolution. This could relate to how it often lowers the foe's guard with cute gestures and appearing defenseless before chomping and gobbling up the foe whole, which is also supported by the anime Pokedex entries and its Photodex entry. This behavior could also tie into its origins being based on the Futakuchi Ona, a Japanese yokai monster that is told to masquerade as an ordinary woman to hide her true nature from others, and perhaps even the Oni a yokai demon that before the relation to the Yamaoba, another yokai, they were depicted as attacking and eating people who desired a drink from the mountain rivers. Not to mention, it can already learn a lot of dark type moves already. The Rose Raid Line, Fairy Typing. This one may very well be a stretch, but from what I can see, they are categorized in the Fairy Egg Group, which contains Pokemon that are considered cute and petite, that gives credence to the possibility that they might be based on fairies, given that Rose Raid in particular has a humanoid design and their connection to roses as expressed in their dex entries and anime appearances is just like fairies' connections to flowers and nature. In fact, one characteristic of fairy type Pokemon is not only their cute aesthetics, but also their ability to be sensitive to others' feelings and bring about peace, love, and spread happiness to others, like in Enamorous, Togekiss, and Sylveon. And in Roselia and Rose Raid's case, their aroma is stated in the Pokedex and anime dex entries to be relaxing and sweet. And while they don't learn many fairy type moves, except for Roselia at one point learning the move Sweet Kiss, Roselia does require a shiny stone to evolve into Rose Raid, which, if you think about it, that item can be synonymous with fairy type Pokemon, such as Togekiss requiring one, as well as Florges. The Cacturn Line Ground Typing. This one is very simple, as indicated by their Pokemon category, official designs, and their name and etymology in all available languages, they are both based on cactuses, presumably the Barrel Cactus and the Sawaro Cactus, which are known to be found in deserts aka dry and arid environments. In fact, this point is even stated in their dex entries both in the games, anime, and side series games such as New Pokemon Snap. They can also be found in dry locations within the main series games and even side series ones such as Route 111, Route 228, the desert section in the Johto Safari Zone, the Northern Desert, the Haruba Desert, and the Sweltering Sands among others. And while they do learn very few ground moves than fighting type moves, they do learn Sand Veil, a predominantly ground type ability which does make it one of the few non-ground type Pokemon to have this ability. The Altaria Line, Fairy Typing. Ultimately, I chose the fairy typing due to Swablu and Altaria being based on a blue bird as indicated by its name and etymology in all available languages, that some cultures such as European, Native American, and Chinese folklore symbolize the blue bird as a harbinger of happiness or hope, which could be translated as a characteristic of fairy type Pokemon to bring about peace, love, and spread happiness to others like in Enamorous, Togekiss, and Sylveon. And Altaria is noted in, the, in its game and anime dex entries for having a kind disposition and its singing and humming soprano voice, making its listeners feel like they are in a dreamy wonderment. And let's not forget Altario already has a mega evolution form that is fairy typing, and these qualities are stated to be more enhanced as a result of mega evolution on the official Pokemon website, and gains the pixelate ability which is not only given to fairy type Pokemon, but also in other translations it is mentioned as fairy skin, which while a result of mega evolving, could be another enhanced feature from the regular form. And while they do learn a decent amount of fairy type moves, it may very well be a byproduct of Mega Altaria. Soul Rock, Fire Typing. 
While this would disturb the duality between it and Lunatone, it has remarkable connotations to the fire type as its design and name etymology in all available languages indicates that it is blatantly based off the sun and solar energy, and this relationship is present in its deck entries in the games, anime, and adventures manga where it is known to absorb solar energy and sunlight as nutrients, produce intense heat when rotating its body, emit intensely bright light and possibly may even be from the sun itself, or an avatar of the sun. That could explain where sunstones are from, which can also be found on them in the wild, and furthermore there is also the numerous fire type moves they can already learn, including flare blitz, despite not being a fire type. The Cray Dilly Line, Water Typing. Surprisingly, there is quite a lot of evidence for this one. To start off, as indicated by their Pokemon category and name etymology in all available languages, they appear to take inspiration from barnacles, Legeep, a sea atoll, sea anemones, and sea lilies in particular, also known as crinoids, which are marine animals that can be found in sea bottoms and shallow waters. The same can apply to Cradily specifically, which may take inspiration on the predatory tunicat that live anchored along deep sea canyon walls and the seafloor. All this may explain why they are part of the Water 3 egg group that contain aquatic invertebrate Pokemon. This common theme of inhabiting water is echoed in the games where they can be found in the sparkling sea in the dream world, the sea section in the power park, and even through fishing in Giant's Bed and Giant's Foot. And if we're counting side series games, there's the Sea Trench, Drenched Bluff Dungeon, and the Lentil Sea Floor among others. Even the anime had an episode where this line could be found on an island called the Whale's Island. Their photo decks, in-game and anime decks entries also describe how they roam and inhabit the ocean seafloor, seabed, and primordial seas, build their nests in warm waters, and disguises itself as seaweed to catch other aquatic prey. Both can learn Storm Train as an ability that is learnt mostly by water-type Pokemon, as well as the water-type move Brine for the same reason. The Amaldo line. Water Typing Much like Cradily, as suggested by their official designs, Pokemon category, and name etymology, they are based off aquatic fossilized animals, in this case the Anomalocaris, aquatic marine trilobites, the brine shrimp, which all of course inhabit the water. This could explain its relation to the Water 3 egg group, which contain Pokemon that are reminiscent of aquatic invertebrates. In addition, their dex entries echo this relationship with water by describing how they catch prey with their claws on the seafloor, use their feathers in Japanese or wings in English to swim in the water which regards them as good swimmers, and may very well be the reason for them being able to learn the Swiss Swim ability as their hidden ability, despite being one of the only non-water type Pokemon to obtain it, and acknowledging how they lived in primordial seas before going extinct and going out to sea to hunt. The anime even expresses this sentimentality in Anarif's Dex entries, and a particular episode where the lion could be found inhabiting an island called Whale's Island. And actually, there was a section in the Pokemon Adventures manga that showed an Armaldo being able to swim and dive to save a character called Tabitha, elaborating this connotation even further. In the games, they can be found in aquatic locations such as Balamere Lake, the sea section in the Pal Park, the sparkling sea in the dream world, and if we're counting side series games, then there's Shimmering Lake, Stormy Sea, Drenched Bluff Dungeon, and so on. And unlike the Cray Dilly line, they can actually learn a good amount of water type moves already. Milotic, Dragon and Fairy Typing. This one you may consider a bit of a stretch, but to explain the dragon typing, its design may be seen as a counterpart to Gyarados that emphasizes beauty for Pokemon contests, and right down to the same base stat totals and mirroring stages of evolution, and therefore may not be too far-fetched to suggest that they take similar inspirations from sea serpents, in particular aka sea dragons. This could explain its association to the dragon egg group, which contains Pokemon that are based off creatures that are considered dragons in various cultures and Milotic even gets what could be considered a Dragon-type ability with Marvel Scale. And just like Gyarados, it is able to learn a good amount of Dragon-type moves already. Now for the Fairy-typing, although it can't learn a lot of Fairy-type moves aside from Disarming Voice that is learned by a majority of Fairy-type Pokemon admittedly, its Pokédex entries and Anime Dex entries express how it has the power to sense hostility and quell anger and conflict when its body glows pink vividly, and thus emitting smooth frequencies and or waves of energy from its body or even just by its sheer beauty, which could be in reference to the Roman goddess Venus who was noted for similar traits. And to top it all off, it does get Q-Charm as its hidden ability, which is predominantly only acquired by fairy-type Pokemon like Sylveon. Glalie, Rock and Dark Typing 
The big reasoning for this is that although it doesn't learn much rock type moves, its dex entries directly states that Glalie's actual body is made up of rock that it covers with ice armor, which is also stated in its anime dex entries. And this is supported by it being a part of the mineral egg group that houses Pokemon made up of either inorganic but mostly organic substances. And similar to ground type Pokemon, it and even snow runs in some cases can be found in arid locations such as the mountain section in the Pal Park, Outerway Cave, and deep within caves where the outside lacks snowfall. For the dark typing, this mainly leans onto the fact that its Japanese name and German name etymology contains the words Oni and Demon. Oni being a Japanese yokai that are known for their fierce and evil nature, which may explain the black shading in its design just like other dark type Pokemon, and also justify why it can learn a decent amount of dark type moves. Frostlass, dark typing. Similar to Glalie, Frostlass takes heavy inspiration from the Yuki Ona, a female ice yokai demon from Japanese mythology, and in many tale depictions it was expressed as evil or aggressive for killing unsuspecting mortals. And no better place to see this than in its dex entries, where it directly states that it likes to prey on male humans or Pokemon, either while hiking or in human settlements, and goes out of its way to freeze them solid and bring them back to its den as decoration pieces, which is also stated in its photo dex entry, as well as relish on their souls as food or possibly place deadly curses on them. This was even showcased in the anime where in one episode it outright kidnapped Dance Piplup and Meowth and created illusions to manipulate the gang into doing its bidding. In addition, much like Glalie, it even learns quite a few dark type moves already. Salamence, Fire Typing You know, honestly, I was about to lean towards a possible dark typing, but then as I was looking into it, I discovered that Salamence only becomes violent, brutal, and aggressive when it's provoked or enraged. So as a result, I kept looking and discovered that it surprisingly has some connections to the fire typing, as its text entries commonly state how Salamence likes to sprout fire from its mouth when enraged or as shown in the anime as an expression of joy when it has achieved its lifelong dream of flying. This same idea is even referenced in its anime dex entries and even with Pokemon Hunter J Salamence using fire attacks on multiple occasions. And in the side series games Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia and Guardian Signs, it mentions how it can breathe powerful flames and launch large blue fireballs with its field move being Fire Base 2. On that note, it surprisingly has the ability to learn a lot of fire type moves already, which if you didn't know, it is one of the few non-fire type Pokemon to learn the move Ember. All these indications may point to the fact that it may very well take inspiration from European dragons and possibly from mythical animals of the same name that are commonly associated with breathing fire, being based off reptiles, and being depicted as very scaly. That may be what the red colouring on its design is supposed to represent, perhaps. The Lottie Twins, Flying Typing Unless you count them having the levitate ability to represent their flying capabilities, this one is a dead giveaway, especially when considering ever since their debut generation, they, alongside their mega forms, have been depicted as soaring in the air numerous times in the anime, including in its anime dex entries, in animated shorts such as the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire animated trailer, Pokemon Generations and Pokemon Evolutions, in movie appearances like in Movie 5 and Movie 18, in the Pokemon Adventures manga, side series games like in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and Super Smash Bros where they are shown flying around the stage to use Steel Wing, and plus their trophy description where it's directly stated for them to fly faster than jet planes, as well as Pokemon Ranger Guardian Science and Pokepop Wii where it mentions its aerial abilities and how they fly around quickly. And of course in the main series games, such as in the third generation opening sequence, roaming around the region like in Hoenn, the Dream Yard in Unova, and the Kanto region in Hawk on Soul Silver, and especially in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire where you can literally ride on either one to traverse the region. Plus the sprites and 3D models for both forms are shown floating off the ground or flapping their wings. All of this may be derived from their inspiration of jet planes, which is backed up by their mega forms having jets on their arms, and the constant reference to them in their dex entries and trophy description from Smash, as well as their dex entries mentioning their two appendages on their backs as being wings, and their bodies surrounded by feathers all over. In addition to birds, as indicated by an unused design, possibly the jungle fowl and the mallet, a legless bird, and to top it all off, it can learn a good amount of flying type moves like Tailwind, Dual Wing Beat, and most of all, fly. 